Today on What It's Like, very special treat, 1947 Packard Super Custom Clipper 8 Limo made by Henny. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like. If this is your first time checking out the channel, you've hit the jackpot. Each episode features these cars as if you are in the market for these cars with information, specs, period correct ads. We feature the classics, vintage, some exotics, lots of orphan cars. This channel is home to the orphan cars and cars that seem to get lost in the shuffle. If that sounds like a channel that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. Real quick announcement before we move on to the 1947 Packard. We are doing a reflection episode. We are going to talk past, present and future. Fear not, we are not going anywhere. Just wanna fill in a couple blanks and talk about a few things. Let's talk 1947 Packard model lineup. But before we talk about the 47 Packard model lineup, we have to set the stage. Let's talk 40s Packard in general. And this is what happened. This is what Packard looked like before the war. Then World War II happened. Packard built the Merlin V12 engines under contract. And honestly, that could take a whole episode within itself. Packard during the war. And I only bring that up because Packard before the war was totally different than Packard after the war. In many ways, one could say that Packard was one of the biggest casualties of World War II because what happened after the war just frankly didn't make sense to me. They, they went from this really prestigious company and they still made prestigious cars, don't get me wrong. They just wasn't the same. And it's almost like Packard had sort of an identity crisis in the war and they just totally lost their way. Why they didn't produce the Merlin V12 in a smaller, more compact size and make that affordable to the masses is beyond me. I'd like to hear your comments in the comment section. What are your thoughts in the comment section below? 47 Packard was offered in 10 models in four series, Clipper 6, Clipper 8, and Clipper Deluxe 8, Super Clipper 8, and at the top was the custom Super Clipper 8. And people say that I use a lot of adjectives. That is a lot of adjectives. Anyway, 1947 was a continuation model or a carryover model that was used in 1946. The Packard Custom Super Clipper 8 is the car in which this limo is based on. Clipper name was introduced as a new model name brought to you courtesy of Howard Dutch Darren. Super Custom became available June of 41 and was the king of the hill, top of the heap, most luxurious car Packard produced during this time and it competed with the Cadillac 60 Special. But let's stop right there for a second. We have to talk about the other manufacturer in this process, Henny Motor Company, which was Packard's professional coach builder for professional cars such as they built limos, ambulances, hearses, and flower cars, was founded in 1927 and was in business until 1954. It's important to point out that 1927 is when the Henny Motor Company was founded. There was two other businesses prior to the Henny Motor Company revolving around carriage companies. It's also important to note that Henny wasn't solely proprietary to Packard. They also did professional cars for other companies such as Oldsmobile, Cadillac, and Lincoln. Henny was finished in only the finest materials, including broadcloth upholstery, Molstred carpeting, and art modern wood grain trim and Bakelite plastic. I need to make a real quick clarification because I'm gonna get in the comment section if I don't. Henny was used as Packard's professional car supplier. That, that's the key word, professional. Their coach builder was Dietrich. Let's talk specs, 236 and a half inches long, 76.125 inches wide. It rides a wheelbase of 148 inches. Base curb weight is 5,086 pounds. Price, $11,444.54, which is equivalent to you spending $150,000 in the year 2022. Total 1947 Packard production was 55,477 units, of which total super custom clipper this figure also includes touring sedans and, and some other cars as well, not just the professional cars, was roughly 2,200 total professional cars. That is the flower car, limo, ambulance, hearse. I couldn't find a figure. So if you know, put it in the comment section below, please and thank you. 
Moving on to engines, only one engine on offer for the Packard Super Custom Clipper 8, and that was a 356 cubic inch displacement flathead 8. 5.8 liters, it makes 165 horsepower, 292 pound-feet of torque with a compression rating of 6.85 to 1. So I dug up some specs with a 3-speed manual 0-60 to 60, and a 4-speed transmission 0-60 uh, zero, zero numbers, but I don't know if these will jive with this car because this car is a coach built car it weighs significantly more so i will put them in there but i'm not going to say that these numbers would jive anyway with a three speed manual zero to 60 16.7 seconds top speed 86 miles per hour 11 miles to the gallon is the average fuel consumption with a four speed manual zero to 60 16.7 seconds it's the same theoretical top speed 94 miles per hour with an average fuel economy rating of 12.9 miles to the gallon all right just wow let's talk styling so just notice how these chrome pieces or stainless or whatever you want to call them notice how they wrap around it gives the impression that it's like a bottom grill but it's not i always thought that it was kind of like a grill like a wraparound grill grill is here this is just added check out the nose like that's my hand for reference that's a huge just notice all these lines how this comes back and tapers in with the body also notice this so right as this line comes in and tapers into the body you have this line that starts protruding outward it comes back to the rear fender bulge back here notice there isn't any gravel guards but it does have this fender bulge coming back to the back here this car looks a million times better in person than it does on the screen it's hard to convey just all of everything that's going on just check out this line here. I absolutely love the drip rails. Also this. Just check out how this windshield is designed. How these lines come up. Notice this one has a cow hood scoop. Coming up to the door and getting inside, I always thought that these pulled out, but these turn. But also just notice real quick, all the designs, how many tiers this is. The door's got some heft to it too as well. And notice how this door is designed. Here's my finger for reference. It's a pretty deep door. This feels like metal, but it's just simulated wood. Door handle to pull the door shut armrest to put your arm on, door handle to get out, window crank for the big window. And that's what it looks like. This is what the vent window looks like. Coming down inside the pedal box down here, handbrake, clutch, brake, gas pedal. This one's a limousine and it's got a partition, which would be awesome to just haul kids around in. You and your wife can sit up here and block out the sound. I mean, that's what I would use it for. That's what the door sounds like when you're closing it. Here's what over the hood looks like. Here's what first person looks like. That's what the cow looks like when it's open all the way in its open position. Here's what under the steering wheel looks like. I wear size 34 pants. If you're a little bit bigger than me, 36 looks like it would probably fit in here too. But if you're like a 38, it might be a little bit, might be a little, it might be snug. On to the button switches and knobs, starting on the left-hand side and moving right. Ignition, amp gauge, gasoline gauge, water temperature, oil pressure, speedometer, 
odometer at the top and tripometer just below it. Headlights, fog lights, instrument panel lights, lighter, fresh air ventilation, heater, defrost, map light, and clock. Up above, you got some sun visors. There's a nice mirror. Notice it's tinted. So that's very interesting. I've never seen a tinted rear view mirror from this time period. Another sun visor. This is what I look like behind the wheel. There's tons, tons of headroom. So much headroom in this car. I don't feel claustrophobic, but it does feel kind of big. A back view from the front looks like. On to the glove box test. Here is our test subject. Here is my hand for reference. Here is our glove box in question. Look at that, it fits in there no problem at all. And that's why I show this, because you would never know that it's something that big could sit behind this door. Coming to the rear door, it's a lot like the front door, only it's in the rear and it's even bigger. And it'll open up 90 degrees, just like that. Also notice the material on this door is different than the material on the front door. So there's the front door, it's all black. It kind of sort of feels like a vinyl material, but I could be wrong. Anyway, the material is totally different back here. It's even a different type of material, not just color. Door handle to pull the door shut. This is the window for the crank for the big window. Just notice how this door is designed. This is the door handle to get out. There are lights so that you can see. This is what the rear seat looks like. This is how much room is in the back seat. But if you notice right here, there are, these are jump seats. So if you wanted to make this into a seven or eight passenger configuration. So to pull these jump seats out, you pull it until it hits this part here. It won't let you pull it out any further. And then you pull up on it. So that's what the jump seat looks like. That's how much space you have behind the jump seat. Definitely have a whole lot more room if you don't use the jump seat. But I'm going to sit in the jump seat. Knee space isn't that bad. That's what it looks like. Back to front view. A lot of modern cars don't even have this type of head space doesn't feel claustrophobic even in the center row so putting down the jump seat just fold this down it goes right back in there like that but this is the money seat right here so without the jump seat I have I have more than an arm's length of space I can put my legs out like this like this is awesome tons of headroom there's there's lots of room in this car there's no there's there's nothing and the, and the greatest thing is is i got this partition here so if i don't want to talk to if i want to talk to the driver i can put the window down and it it goes all the way down this looks like real wood but i could be wrong it could be simulated as well but just check that out that's freaking awesome you know, I would buy this car and, and drive it with my kids. And if I got sick of listening to my kids, I'd roll the window up. But I don't have any control over the window. They have control over the window back here. Some creature comforts back here. Got some lights. There's a nice hold on, grab rope. These windows open. They're, they're vent style. And just check that out. They go, look at how far they go. That's crazy. Ashtray, armrest, armrest. I'm gonna pull the jump seat up out of the floor so you can see how much space is here if the jump seat was here. So with the jump seat in place, 
there's adequate knee room. It's a whole lot more comfortable with the jump seat stowed away. There's also a footrest, which you can extend outward like this and put your, put your feet on it like so. Everything, all the creature comforts, like there's a cigarette lighter as well as an ashtray inside here. There's a, this is the light switch for the light that's back here. Everything that's on the driver's side is also on the passenger side. There's an ashtray. Vent windows, armrest, grab handle. There's a light, but there isn't a light switch over here. So I'm guessing that this light switch controls both lights. There's also nice grab handles to grab onto to get in and out. All right, getting underneath the hood of the 47 Packard limo right here. This is the hood release. And then you come up out here. There's another catch right inside here. So there's the other catch and you just kind of move that out of the way. Just check that marvelous eight cylinder out dual horns oil bath air cleaner check out that battery look how slender that battery is and it's also important to note that this can be open from either side so this is the passenger side Hood release push it straight back towards the firewall it's the same thing this hooks on there so you just push it just push it out of the way and here's the exhaust and intake side On to the pros and cons. We are getting all of these pros and cons from the complete book of collectible cars, Blue Chip Auto Investments, 70 years from 1930 to 2000 by Richard M. Langworth and the auto editors of Consumer Guide. On the positive side, one of the very few with both classic and milestone car status. Timeless design seems to look better with each passing year. Superb quality, smooth performance against it. Henny body panels in short supply. And now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to give me the correct name of the band as well as song title, both correctly. First person to do so will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. I read and answer all comments posted. Second way is we have a Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. There is no obligation to join, but it does give you the opportunity to share rides, stories. If you have advertisements or anything car related, go ahead and share it on there. Like I said before, it's about car community and the car community is for everyone. And look, I'm not a jerk. If you have a car YouTube channel, feel free to share it on there because like I said, it's about the car community and i just want to keep this information alive so if i catch you on here or facebook just know i appreciate everything and i mean that with every fiber of my being and until next time toodaloo